and I wasn't happy with how light it got after it, uh, like it got darker after it dried so I'm just using a little bit of off-white straight out of the bottle it's called antique linen so it's not quite white but um, it actually did a much better job at highlighting all of those raised areas that I wanted to on the first pass. Now I'm using the same brown that I originally stained the wooden sticks with because I actually do like this color but I'm only painting the surfaces uh, not bothered about the gaps because now inside of the gaps there's already a good amount of color. Uh, and for the grapes I use this quite dark purple, bluish purple um, for the base coat and I'm using this very light green for the leaves and vines as a base layer. Uh, these are very nice fluid acrylic paints and they glide on like butter. I really like them. It's a joy to work with uh, paints that want to cooperate. And I'm being careful going around the edges with a fine brush and sometimes wiping off if I make mistakes. Um, trying to not color out of the lines. Um, and basically just covering everything, all of the leaves and all of the vines with, um, with this light green as a base coat. Now that those base layers have dried, I've made a I've used a darker green that I watered down quite a lot so it behaves a little bit more like a wash and I'm applying it all over the green areas but not in a uniform way. I don't want to actually cover all of the green, the light green that was there before. I'm just staining it and letting it pool around the veins in the leaves and around um, the insides of the curls. And now I've mixed a little bit of brown into that green wash and darkened it. It almost became completely brown but it still has that hue of green and I'm using it to bring out the shadows and you I used it uh, everywhere not just uh, on the leaves I've used it around all of the shapes to create some shadows and now straight out of the bottle I'm using a very very nice olive green this bottle has like a sponge on the end I just used it directly to have this mottled green effect I'm using a much brighter purple here to go over the grapes and I'm also using a paintbrush to paint them to make them look grossy and to have that dimension of color. And there it is. Um, all painted. Now coming back to this ribbon, um, I am going to apply it to the bottom of the bottle there. I was not happy with that gap, so mid-project I decided I was going to add another element to hide that and I wasn't very happy with the neck of the bottle or the cap either. So I'm also using the leftover there to just go nicely around it and have this extra little bit. Um, and it came out quite well. 
it was a fortunate little accident that the ribbon was just as wide as the cap was. And onto the top of the cap, this was planned from the beginning, I am just attaching a small little resin rose from my stash. Um, and painting it that dark purple that uh, the, the same one I used on the grapes. And then eventually I will go over uh, with the light of purple as well. And while I'm at it, I've decided to change the color of the braided cord to match the grapes as well. And I'm using more of that olive green to go over the lace ribbons everywhere because it was too light of a green and I wasn't happy with it. I think it looks better with the darker olive green. And this is my favorite part, when everything seems to come alive. I've just squared it a little bit of a gold acrylic paint and I'm using my finger to apply it all over the bottle. Basically trying to pick out the raised edges and the textures, I'm not really working it into the shadow areas, but mostly touching every area. And there it is now all shiny with gold and I'm going to do the same for the cap. And I'm going to leave it to dry before the very last step. I'm going to use some leftover um, acrylic moss and I'm using a matte medium instead of PVA glue because this stuff dries completely clear and just disappears um, whereas PVA glue can leave a shiny film after drying. So I've just mixed in the fake moss with, um, with the math medium and I'm using my fingers again to apply it to all the desired areas. I always knew that flat surface was going to get covered on the cap and tackling that problem area at the bottom with the little gaps and where the fence isn't lining up perfectly i'm using the fake moss to fill in the gaps and give it this organic look i'm very fond of uh, putting grass or moss or plant overgrowth type looking things on my project. It's just, it just makes me happy and I find it aesthetically pleasing. Maybe it doesn't make that much sense on a wine bottle, uh, but it's my project <laughs> and this is what I decided to do. Uh, just the last pass over little things that I feel like need a little bit more attention. Uh, still working with my fingers. <laughs> and there it is, the finished project. Uh, this is about 24 hours later, after it completely dried, including the fake moss. Uh, there's a good shot of the cat. Um, I'm going to give it a good few more days or even a week to completely dry and uh, I'm going to apply a few layers of polyacrylic varnish so that everything stays in place forever and that it becomes, um, well, water resistant. If not washable still, it wouldn't um, get damaged. And there it is. Just a few pictures to give you 
close-ups of what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of making this decorative wine bottle. I had a good time making it. Well, have a nice day. Bye.